Hallelujah. Thank you, Max. You know, I heard a story about a man who went to KFC and he went for, for the chicken buffet. He said it like that, for the buffet. He was hungry for chicken. And he said when he got in there, he saw an elderly woman sitting just in a real pretty nice dress just by herself. And he said, I could tell the Lord was starting to talk to me about this woman. And he said, but Lord, I want my chicken. <laughs> he was focused on the buffet, he said. And uh, then he could tell, you know, the Lord's really wanting to do something for her. Maybe she's not saved and I'll probably lead her to the Lord. So he went over there with his chicken and he struck up a conversation, said she looked really pretty and asked if he could sit there. And he found out she was saved. And she told him that her husband had recently, just maybe in the last six months, is that right? 30 days, in the last 30 days, Kim has to help me with these stories, that her husband had gone home to be with the Lord, and she said, this is my first time to go out and eat. And I said, Lord, how did, how did she say it? She said, Lord, you know I do not like to eat by myself. You know I don't want to eat by myself. And she was looking to the Lord, and you know, he's faithful. He's faithful. He hears our prayer, and there's nothing too small. There's nothing too big. Nothing is impossible for him. Who's coming up next? Anybody? The, the mic is hot, so uh, it's, it's ready. It's prepared. I can, I can tell. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm very grateful for these two people. <laughs> Jesus gave them to me, and, uh, and I'm thankful. You know, he puts people in our lives and connects us. And Kim was telling me that she had seen a, something Patsy Caminetti said about when certain cells hit together. And I don't know much about this, but some of them, sometimes nothing will happen much. But then some of them, when they hit together, light explodes. An explosion of light. Is that what she said? Yeah. I hope I'm not taking your material here. Yeah. But uh, that's what we are in the body and there are divine connections and divine appointments that God has for your life. And he sees you. And he knows where you are. And he knows how to get to you. He has a million ways to get to you. <laughs> With provision and help and wisdom and power. Okay. Kimmy is my... Uh concordance sometimes uh, you know we we get to go into prison minis prisons uh, and minister just like Max does and um, it has really stretched me <laughs> because you can't take devices in and search things you have to know the word <laughs> it's a good thing it's good um, Isaiah 55 says um, where is it Cami you said it but Ah, it's eight. For my thoughts, this is God, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as high as, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And um, I'm so glad we live in a better covenant <laughs> based on better promises where in the past we couldn't have had his thoughts. Um, but, you know, he did give us his thoughts in this word, but also he said he'd reveal them to us by his spirit in, in Corinthians. And so when we read that, it's not... Uh, there's, there's religion can make it sound well my thoughts are not your thoughts because your thoughts are dumb and my thoughts are good you know but that's not the God we serve he he's the God of come up higher I've got a higher thought I've got a better thought I and he doesn't he's not withholding those higher thoughts from us and I'm so thankful that we serve a God of more than enough with every thought we need for every situation. And we heard recently that all you need in any situation is a higher thought. Anything that you're facing, all you need is his thought on that situation. And to know that there are higher thoughts than our thoughts. See, Cammy does this thing, and I tease her. She said, when you go through the mind files, whenever she does it, she uses her, does her fingers like this, 
and you can't find the answer, and you go back through, and you think you're going to find the answer in it. Isn't it good to know that our God is all-knowing, and he has a higher thought for you in that situation? You know, when they came to the Red Sea, it wasn't, um, they just needed the higher thought of God. Moses, you got what you need, just raise your hand. The, you know, for Noah, the higher thought was build a boat. It, he has the way to keep us. He has the way out for us. He has the best plans. He knows you. He knows you intimately, in depth. He knows your thoughts before you think them. And he is not mad at you. <laughs> he is not upset at you. He is ready to empower you with the thought you need for the situation that you're facing. And not just the thought, but the power to do it the grace to, to do it easy. Where it, I mean, where it is just light and easy and joy. Joy for it. I mean, can you imagine joy? I mean, if Jesus can have joy in the face of the cross because he was looking beyond to the joy that was set before him, we can have joy in the midst of anything we're facing with that higher thought, with his way of thinking, with what he says about it, the way he sees it. You know, um, he sees the end from the beginning. And if you're in a situation, you know, if you're in a game, uh, I think I've shared this before, but there was a, a lady who was uh, getting ready for a church service and she was turn, you know, she had just happened to turn on the TV to whatever was on in the hotel room, and there was a fight on. And she didn't watch fights, you know, but um, there was one, and and uh, she it got her attention because the person was like, "Well, I just want to give all the glory to God, and I just, you know, I'm doing this for Him, and I just, I'm about Him." And she's like, "Oh, well, that's really good, you know." And then the other one was like, "I'm gonna crush him. I'm gonna destroy him." And she decided this is a spiritual battle we've got to you know so she was she started praying in nervous tongues and you know started trying to war in the spirit for this and she's watching along and she's just really in this thing and all of a sudden it comes up and shows that it's a pre-recorded fight <laughs> the end has already been established <laughs> and sometimes I think we get in there trying to get stuff to but you know what we serve the God who has already been to the end and knows and knows he knows the way to go he knows the steps to take he and guess what if you need reminded we win we win because of jesus and what he did for us that blood whoo that blood when you you have faith in that blood it goes as far as it needs to go and i'm just so grateful and i just want to thank and honor him and honor that blood and honor his thoughts i'm telling you he's got good ones he doesn't have problems corey ten boom said he has plans and we just we stick with him it i know it sounds simple but hey why not i mean that's the way he made it <laughs> he made it simple he did it takes um a lot of uh not intelligence to make it hard. <laughs> but he wanted to make it simple. That we, Cammie was just telling me that Max taught her about uh, that verse where it says that we wouldn't get away from the simplicity of Christ. That we wouldn't get drawn away in our mind away from how simple and good he is and how easy he made it and how Jesus did the hard part. It's finished. I mean, this is a body that knows that it is done. It is good. And, and his thoughts will just lead you. And so you'll just take a step, and he'll lead you on the next step. And his thoughts will just take you higher and higher from glory to glory, from faith to faith. And you'll get somewhere, and you'll be like, how did I get here? I used to would have done that. And then here fruit props out and you're 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 not who you were you but you really you're who he made you on the inside and you just let that life of god come on the outside so that was what came on my heart you're being summoned <laughs> hallelujah you know uh 
One of the things that the Lord has helped me see is if you establish he either is faithful or he's not, we make a decision. If he's faithful, then what's the problem, right? <laughs> what's the problem? If he's, if he's that faithful, which he is, then what's the problem? Um, when I was in Egypt, I was teaching up there, and, and the students had asked me. I was teaching at Rama Egypt, and they'd asked me, are you afraid of being beheaded? I said, why does it have to come to that? And they said, because here in the country, they'll behead Christians. And I said, well, why can't the sword break? Why can't the sword bend? Why can't Jesus manifest and all these men fall down like they did in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus? You know, I said, if the head comes off, why can't it go back on? <laughs> it's a higher thought. And so the students had said, you know, why do you think the way you think? And I said, well, because God asked a question in Jeremiah. He said, behold, I'm the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? There's a question mark. Which means there's an answer that's required. Is there anything too hard for God? If the answer is no, then what's keeping you up at night? It's pretty simple, right? If the answer is yes, there's something too hard, that means you have to think of all of the reasons and all of the ways and then run it by God to see if he's going to approve. And he's not because nothing is impossible to those who believe. How many believers we got? If you're a believer, that means you are also able to walk on water. You're also able to multiply fish and bread or whatever is necessary, right? You know, when you think about it, on your way to church, you drove on a road that you didn't make to get to a place that you didn't build to enjoy good word that you didn't write, <laughs> right? So the road was already set. The place was already established. The, the provisions were already there. So you just drove on a road in a car you never built. It's the same way with God. When we decide to follow him, we're going to be following a path that we didn't build. We're going to follow a path that he already laid out, and it's good. It's great. It, you know, when you think about it, there, there's one common denominator in all these words I'm going to say. Healed, delivered, forgiven, restored, redeemed, established, provided for. It's past tense. Is the common denominator, and the same source is God. We have been forgiven. We have been redeemed. We have been restored. Right? We have been provided for. And at the same time, we're also seated in a seat that we could never ask for. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus at the right hand of God. Meaning, when God looks to his right, he sees Jesus, but then he sees us there. No man could have asked God, can I sit at your right hand? Because we we're not that smart. We don't think like that. We would just say, can I just get into heaven? And God says, not just will you be in heaven, but you're going to be seated at my right hand. That's how close you are. No better seat to sit in. And when you think about what God did, and I'll, I believe I'll end with this, um, because we also did come to hear a good word from Max. <laughs> so when you look at what God did, just for you and I, like he doesn't need us. He desires us. And because he desired mankind, we needed a place to live, not him. He already were, was here. So he says, I have a desire and I want to show my love and my goodness and my mercy and just who I am to people like me. So they need a place to live. So I'm going to create something for them to live on. Thus, the planets and the universe the galaxies that never end. And even with the new telescope, they're saying, man, this thing goes far beyond we ever thought. Yeah, because God never told it to stop. And it's just to host this planet that we live on. Just so he could say, I love you and demonstrate his love. And the thing is, it wasn't hard for God to do it because he spoke it. Now, my mind gets tilted when I think about planets that dwarf our planet. And that all of that material had to come from someplace. And that came from his mouth. When he said light be, and it became, it all just came together and was created. Does that make sense? And he did it just so that way he could create us. And when you, if you read in Genesis, he spoke everything into existence. He made all provisions for mankind. And man wasn't created yet. And then when it got to the point that man was going to be created, God didn't speak us into existence. He got so personal, he got so intimate that he says, I'm going to use my own hands 
and create them with my hands and I'm going to breathe my breath into them. And then knowing that he would have to purchase us back, knowing after I create everything, I'm going to have to purchase them back. I mean, he could have just flicked this planet with his finger and it could have still been sailing far off and him starting brand new and if he wanted to. But he says, no, I'm going to buy back what I created, which was stolen. And it's going to cost me and it's worth it. And then when you think about all that God did just for us. He filled us with his spirit. He washed us in his blood. He put us in heavenly places, right? He gave us all of heaven. He did all of this and then he says, I'm going to put my love in you. When he, when he moved into us, when we got saved, he put his love in us. And he says, hey, I'm going to give you my word, not just in bodily form, but in written form. So that way your faith will grow because faith pleases me. So here's the thing that pleases me. Have you ever wondered why the Bible is illegal in over 50 countries? It's the only book that pleases God. It's the only thing that causes faith to arise and faith to come and us to know who God is. If there was no power in that book, then why is it illegal? If there was no power, then why do people die over it? Why is it, so, why is it the only book that's smuggled? The number one bestseller, the, the book that's the most stolen book in the world. Why the Bible? It's because of what it has in it. But most of all, because of who it is. You know, one day I was sitting down in, a, in my recliner and I was eating grapes. And I always meditate on the Lord. I always chew on things that he shows me. And I started weeping, like crying over grapes. <laughs> because the revelation and the understanding that God put the flavor in grapes, even if it was just for me. He didn't have to. He didn't have to put flavor in anything. But he knew we would enjoy it, even if we were his enemies. It's just one part of God saying, look, this is how good I am. He's the originator of all flavors. I mean, think about that. You can take a seed of watermelon here in Oklahoma, a seed in India of watermelon and a seed in Hawaii, and they're all going to taste very close to the same, and they've never met. <laughs> how is that possible? God is upholding everything by his word. So I'm eating this grape and I'm just weeping because he went that deep into just thinking about everyday things that we would enjoy. He even put scent in wood. He didn't have to do that. So when you cut pine wood or cedar wood, you smell it. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to put scent in a, in a flower. He could have just said, just enjoy the colors. Don't be I'm so needy. Isn't the beauty of the flower just enough? No, but God says, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a scent in the flower just so you could smell it and enjoy it. He did this just for you and I. Not because we asked him, but because he's just that good. He's so good that there is no human word to really express how good. Nothing we see, I mean, we haven't seen everything yet, but just to, there's nothing on this planet that would even compare to how good. I don't think our bodies and our minds could, could handle it. That's why when we go to heaven, we don't go up in our regular bodily form and people come back and there's like, you, you know, the, the, the gate is a pearl. Where'd he get that from? What oyster did he find? There's four of them, huge gates. It's a pearl. And then you walk in and there's still people right now probably staring at the street because it's pure gold, thinking how, how can God pave the streets? That's what he thinks about gold. I'll put it on the street. I mean, think about how good he is. But then he washed us in the most precious thing, his blood. Redeemed us, bought us back, purchased us. And it's something that the enemy cannot cross, is that blood. Because the blood will never lose its power. The word will never fail. Amen.